We have a Gila monster in a house. So I'm headed out to go get a Gila monster right now. So I'm headed out to go get a Gila monster right now. Always love that, and it's actually pretty close to my house too. So how come I don't get Gila monsters at my house if I live this close to it? Hello. Hey, this is Brian from Rattlesnake Solutions. I'm I'm really close to you, so I'll be there in about three minutes if that's okay. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. All right, see you shortly. Thanks. There's this area is awesome because people here actually kind of appreciate the wildlife, even the ones that they don't want in their yard. Um, so I understand someone not wanting to have a rattlesnake on their property, um, but killing it is another thing. So when you have little communities that seem to kind of get it, like you move out to the middle of the desert and there are going to be animals here and you can't just kill everything that annoys you. Um, it's really nice working in those places and that's one of the big reasons why I chose to live here. I should also mention that doing anything with wild eel monsters like this is uh, illegal unless you have very special permits, uh, which I have. It's called a wildlife services permit. It's issued by, wild, by Arizona Game and Fish Department uh, for wildlife services professionals such as myself and my team. Uh, so if you see a Gila monster running around out there, please do not, do not harass it or mess with it in any way. Uh, it's really bad for the lizard and it can get you in a lot of trouble. Oh yeah, we'll get them. They're not too, not too fast, thankfully. This is my first Gila monster of the year that I've got at a house. Okay, we had one before in our hot chocolate. Hello everybody, uh, got a great call this morning. Headed to Mesa, we have a Gila monster in a house um i'm not too sure how he said he got it in they're like just remodeling and finishing a house so i think they had the doors open and whatnot and then he went to go move a box and he saw the gila monster <laughs> so we got a gila monster in the house so let's go hey going? good how are you doing thanks for coming out yeah you're welcome i'm excited to see this <laughs> So the doors were just open yesterday, or? Yeah, I've had a bunch of workers, you know. Uh, in and out? Yeah, in and out. So this, this whole area was open into the I garage. See, I see, And then Is on the back half of the house. Weird. Front door was open too for a long time. Oh, I gotcha. So I have no no idea where he is. Okay. Uh, but uh, so yesterday, it was last night when yeah. I was came here to lock up. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was in right around the corner there. Oh. Is it your first healer monster? Uh, yeah, I mean the house is brand new, so I. I mean the one you've ever seen? Yeah, I've never seen anything. So he's over here. He was over here. No, you're fine. They're really slow. It's not. They won't jump out at you or anything. So to your left there, he was like around that corner. Oh. Um, kind of down in the. He could be anywhere. Okay, Mr. Gila. Nothing, huh? Nothing yet. <laughs> Just doing like a quick sweep and then I'll look better behind stuff, but there's not much to look behind. Must be moving. Okay, I have some good questions about Gila monsters in the comments on that post we left uh, on our Facebook page a little while ago. So I'm gonna go through those right now. And if you have anything else, leave it in the comments and I'll make sure to get to it. So the first one comes from Mike. Are they considered an endangered species? So Gila monsters are not an endangered species. They're actually not all that uncommon. They're just uncommonly seen. Those are two very different things. Because of their lifestyle, a lot of people will just never see a Gila monster. People that grow up in Arizona and go hiking all the time may never see one or only see one or something. But if you really know how to find them, you can find a lot more than that. Um, they are imperiled because of development and the way that we are transforming their natural habitat into homes. Uh, they tend to not do very well with that. So not endangered yet. 
big emphasis on the word yet. I should also say that they are protected in Arizona. So protected and endangered are different things. They're not federally protected. Uh, they are protected by the state of Arizona from pursuit or capture or harassment. And you can't keep them unless you have special permits to be able to do so, which we do. That's why we have some. Charles is asking, how bad is their bite? Don't they inject venom or are they just poison that seeps in? But whether or not Gila monsters are venomous or not, they, they are venomous. I have heard from people that will tell me that, well, watch out for heel monster. They're not venomous. They have poison breath. And if you breathe it in, you'll, you'll die. Or their skin is covered with poison glands and that's why it looks bumpy. That is 100% false. Along their bottom jaw, they have multiple venom glands there. So when they bite something, they chew in venom. So they don't have fangs like a rattlesnake. They don't have rear fangs. Uh, they have teeth that chew the venom into it. So they are highly venomous. It is a very painful venom. Naomi is asking, do they come after you or run away if you come across one? Uh, they won't come after you. Um, that's why if you ever try to take a picture of a Gila monster, you get just its butt. As soon as you see one, it's more or less spinning around and trying to get out of there. There will be people that claim that they were chased by a Gila monster. It didn't happen. I'm sorry. It, there's, it's just a silly statement to, to think that a Gila monster is gonna come towards you aggressively. Yeah, he's, he's, they don't jump or anything like that. He just, I just want to be able to kind of get uh, around on his head. But a lot of times they actually do pretty well just kind of riding a hook if he'll hang on to it with his alarms. Okay, guy, get on there. Just like that. All right, that went easy. That's how heel monsters are. They're not fast animals. So as long as we can access them, they're usually pretty easy to catch. Um, you might notice I use my hook instead of my hands, where I'll use my hands to subdue a heel monster that's in captivity uh, or a lot of times. But if I can get them to ride a hook, I'm gonna do that too. It's easy to do and you can never be bitten if you're not touching a heel monster. So why, why go through the risk if I can do it easily that way, right? So Gila monsters don't do as well with relocation as rattlesnakes do typically. They have to go back to the home range very specifically. They have to have lots of uh, time to reorient themselves. They can be eaten by predators or killed by cars during that time. So I'm going to do something here that I've never done before. And normally I can't because, you know, my, my house is way too far away from most of these places. But this place I just got this Gila monster is just over a little hill from my house. Like this is my this is my next door neighbor. I didn't know that before. So that's how I met my my neighbor. <laughs> so all this driving I'm doing, the three minutes, is just literally to go out and, and around and end up in the same spot. So uh, rather than take this Gila monster further away than I would like to and put it into a place where it could get by, hit by a car or something, I'm going to go take it and I'm going to go release it onto my own property. Seems like it's very unlikely that this Gila monster hasn't been cruising around in my driveway before. So um, it's gonna be just at home and then it can reorient itself at its leisure and do just fine. So where am I gonna put it? Well, Gila monsters and tortoises in the wild live together quite often. And the requirements in the winter for a Gila monster and a tortoise are often pretty similar. So we have a tortoise lives outside here. Um, and I'm gonna put the Gila monster in with the tortoise. And it will have no problem at all getting in and out. Uh, what tortoises can't do is climb anything and the Gila monster will have no problem coming and going as it pleases. So it'll be a nice little safe place with some water, nice shaded opportunity to maybe uh, find a spot it'll visit again if it doesn't know it already. We'll see. There's a tortoise burrow and one Gila monster. Come on out. Here we go. Perfect. Oh, he's so cute. Look at that little heel monster. Is he about average size? Um, yeah, 
it's good size. They could get uh, bigger than this, but he's definitely a good size. I think he was sleeping. bucket oh he's so cool I never get never gets old seeing a Gila monster never uh, caught one in the house I gotta say that rattlesnakes yes not a Gila monster people do you want to see him he can't jump yeah. out yeah, we'll to, uh... no, no they're they're pretty slow like honestly the only way you get bit is you can just pick it up with your hands yeah he can't jump out or anything you can, you can get close you're good Thank you so much. You're welcome. So the only venomous lizard we got in uh, the United States. Oh. Like I said, if the only way you're going to get bit is if you pick it up. And there's really no known deaths. Okay. So it's not like a, a rattlesnake or anything like that. Yeah, they can get to be like oh, pretty shit. big. Yeah, that one. That's still good to try an adult right there though. Alright. So this little dude snuck in that house because they're... Literally just um, finishing building that house, so the doors are wide open, so he snuck in somehow. I think they're from the front door, and I'm going to put him in this big rock crevice right here. Oh my gosh. You're so good. You're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. There you go. See you, bud. All right, so that was a really exciting one. Happy I was able to find it. Thankfully, he didn't have too much stuff in his house to look through. Um, but yeah, so you can't leave your doors open here in Arizona. So it's important to note when we're doing relocations of Gila monsters, it's a lot different and it's more difficult than it is with a rattlesnake. They don't relocate very well. Um, they have a home range that they're very much tied to and to take them somewhere else um, could kill them very easily. Um, not that necessarily that they would starve to death, but they have very specific spots that they like and their odds of being eaten by a predator or hit by a car go up pretty, pretty quickly once they're taken out of it. So we work with the environment that we have so that we can relocate them very specifically to the places that we do. Uh, it is not at all advised that people that do not have a deep understanding of the natural history of Gila monsters try to relocate them because doing so, it's not really gonna work out in their favor. Even if it feels like, even if you see them crawl off and you go, oh, I released a Gila monster, it gets to live another day, you're just prolonging uh, death in a lot of cases. So something that's much more useful that we, we do whenever we can is just talk to the homeowners and try to have everybody understand the nature of these animals. Yes, Gila monsters are venomous, but they are not dangerous. And you might ask, why can an animal be venomous but not dangerous? Well, a bottle of bleach in your house is, is not dangerous because it's just sitting there. But if every time you saw a bottle of bleach, you wanted to go and drink it, then it becomes an incredibly dangerous thing. And Gila monsters are very much the same. There's never been an accidental Gila monster bite ever. It's never happened. There are Gila monster bites that happen to the hands and happen to the arms and the forearms. Those aren't accidents. Those are the results of poor decision making. So if you're not someone that has to do that, you don't have that uh, need to gain attention by doing stupid things when wildlife shows up, then Gila monster in your yard is a completely safe thing. I do understand that dogs go after them occasionally too. So if a Gila monster does show up in your yard, you really don't need it to be relocated. Give it time to pass. Maybe, you know, help it along a little bit with a, a garden hose if you have to, or call a professional like us to come out and help that Gila monster get somewhere else uh, so that everybody can remain safe. And consider yourself lucky because you saw one of the least seen and most iconic animals in the Sonoran Desert. Mm -hmm.